In this video, we're going to be exploring the area of a circle and dissecting uh, the language of that formula, pi times radius squared, to find the area, and then extend that out to find the relationship between the area of circles and squares to help with more difficult problem solving. When we take a look at this circle, we can see right away that the diameter of the circle from one end to the other is six units. So if we are to go on and find the area of the circle, we've been taught that formula pi times radius squared, where pi equals about 3.14. So in this case, the radius is 3. So we're going to take 3, square it. 3 squared is 9, and then multiply that by pi. And that will give us the area of the circle. And as you can see, the radius squared is 9, multiply that by 3.14, and that equals 28.26. And that would be square units. And you could also go ahead and count the square units within the circle, and you'd see there are roughly 28. Um, I want to dissect a little bit further about what you're actually doing when you're using this formula so that we can establish a, vi a visual that can be used with problem solving. Let's start with that first step that we did, which was find the radius squared. When you're squaring a number, you're multiplying it by itself, or in this case, you're making it two-dimensional. So the radius from here to here, a distance of 3, we're taking that 3 and squaring it or pulling it out in two directions so that we're going to create a perfect square that is 3 by 3. So that looks like it looks something like this. And as you can count, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we have 9 perfect units. That's what radius squared looks like. So you can get that visual. And now we're taking that 9, or that radius squared, and we're multiplying it by just over 3 times itself, 3.14. So I'm going to go ahead and finish illustrating that visual. Now here's 2 times that radius squared. And here is three times that radius squared. And you can see if each square is nine, it's going to be just over 27 units, just a little bit more than 27. And you can see our answer, 28.26. So that is reasonable and it makes sense. But I want to go ahead now and compare this to the area of what uh, a whole square would be with each side length, six. So I'm going to draw a square here and connect this visual. So if we had a square that had side lengths of 6, look at the space that the circle takes up in comparison to that whole square. I can illustrate that by shading in just over three units. Because if we now, if we're looking at that outside yellow part and we have a perfect square that's six by six units, the area of the circle would be just over three-fourths of that area of the square. In fact, of this whole area of the square, which is outlined in yellow, the area of the circle takes up three point one-fourths the area of the square. I'm going to represent that as a fraction of, and I can write that as the area of the circle over the area of a square that has the same side lengths, the side lengths of the square are the diameter of the circle, is in a perfect ratio of 3.14 fourths, or pi fourths. 
This, work, this is true for the circumference as well as the area. So in this case, um, when we're talking about if the area of the circle, in this case would be 36, or the area of the square is 36, rather. We're multiplying times 9. And you can also see that it's 3.14 times 9, and we have 28.26. Another way to express this would be kind of as a ratio. I'll draw a ratio chart here of 3.14 to 4. So if we know um, if the diameter is 6, we know that we can make a square that has sides 6 by 6. So the area of the square would be 36. And times 9, whatever we do to one side, we must do to the rest, times 9, and that's 28.26. What's nice about developing an understanding of this relationship between circles and squares is it also holds true for the circumference. If we take, I'm going to just erase parts of this, because now when we focus on the circumference, I'm going to look more around that perimeter. So if we enclose, make this a square again, Instead of looking at area, we can look at perimeter or circumference, and it's going to be in that same relationship of 3.14 to 4. So in this case, though, the perimeter of the square would be 6, 12, 18, 24. It still holds true that the relationship if you're talking about a circle, it's going to be just over three-fourths of that, or one side, two sides, three sides, and a little bit more. So it's going to be just over 18. And we can see if we're keeping any equivalent fractions, we multiply by 6. And 3.14 times 6 is 18.84, just about what we estimated. This is especially useful when we get some more challenging problems. Keeping in mind the relationship between a circle and a square that it would be perfectly enclosed in. For example, if we take a look at this next problem, now you are given the area, but you don't know the diameter. The area of the circle is 132.665, and it should say square units, because of course area is measured in two dimensions. What is the length of the diameter? When you've been taught to only use a formula like pi times radius squared, this problem seems very challenging because you don't know what the radius is and it's really hard to work backwards. But if you keep in mind there is a ratio between the area of a circle and the area of a square, and that ratio is for every four units of a square, a circle is going to take up 3.14 of those four, 3.14 fourths. And that's what we illustrated on the previous slide. Now, if we know the area of the circle is 132.665, we can figure out what the area of the square would be. And in a moment, if you're not already putting together the pieces, you're going to see why this will be especially helpful. So if this is a perfect ratio, and if I express it as a fraction of circle to square, it would look like this. Oh, you can see I made a mistake right there. Let me rewrite that. The ratio of a circle to a square is 3.14 fourths. And now if we're saying the area of the circle is 132.665, I'm going to use this relationship, this fractional relationship, to find what the area of that corresponding square will be. I can use a calculator to see what I need to multiply the numerator by or for the circle so that the area is 132.665. To do that, I can do 132.665 divided by 3.14. 
and I'm multiplying by 42.25. Whenever I do to one side, I must do to the rest. So I need to multiply that denominator of 4 times 42.25, and I get 169. Now keep in mind that 169 represents the area of the square, which is this whole thing has an area of the square. Why is that helpful? That's helpful because if we know the area of the square and we know that each side is the same thing, we can now use that to find out what is the length of each side. And the length of each side will also be the diameter. So, what number squared is 169? Or you can think the square root of 169, and that is 13. Therefore, the diameter of the circle must be 13, so that the area of the circle is 132.665 uh, square units. And if we wanted to put that back into a formula, we could prove that by finding the radius. Half of 13 is 6.5. 6.5 times 6.5. That's 42.25. And of course, squaring it would look like this. And now we're going to multiply that times pi, or 3.14. 132.665. Now, keeping this relationship in mind will really be useful um, with some more of the challenging problem-solving uh, questions or word problems where the diameter or, or radius are not given. If you can uh, use that relationship and put it inside of a square, and I call that squircling, uh, a square or a circle inside of a square, a squircle.